All right, today we're looking at lesson one three. We're talking about equivalent expressions. So if we jump right in, the first definition, equivalent expressions have the same value for any number substituted. So again, an expression is anything like 2x plus 3. That's an expression. No equal sign, that would make it an equation. So if I had another expression, like let's just say it was x plus 3 plus x, and I wanted to say, are these equivalent? One way to talk about it is, do they simplify to the same thing? The other way is like the definition to substitute a number in for x and see if you get the same value. If you do, then those would be equivalent expressions, kind of like equal expressions. So a counterexample is a number that shows a pattern is not true. So if somebody says that this pattern always works and then you give them an example of a time it doesn't work, we would call that a counterexample, kind of proving something wrong. The sequence, this is our main focus today. It's a collection of numbers or objects in a specific order. So a pattern, we started looking at patterns. Now a sequence is just a pattern of numbers. And then a term, so we're not talking about a term in an expression, but in a sequence, it's the objects that make up a sequence or a pattern. So you're gonna have term one, term two, term three, it's a pattern, um, and we'll get more into that. So jumping down to example one. So we're gonna compare both of these expressions, both with n as their variable. And we're just gonna discuss, are these equivalent? Now, again, one way to accomplish this task would be to simplify this one because it's unsimplified and see if you got this. And if you did, then you know that they are equivalent. The other way is to test them using numbers and substituting them in. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna plug these numbers in. We would call this our input because we're gonna input that number into this expression. And then our answer, is our output. So you have inputs and you have outputs. So we're gonna input the number one. So for the first one, I'm gonna show my work. So I'm substituting one in for n, so it becomes one plus one plus three, and then one plus one. So this is two plus three plus two for a total of seven. So this one, let's do mentally. You plug this in. Two plus one is three, plus three is six. Over here, we have two plus one, so that's also three. So we had six plus three is nine. If we do it for number three, I'm gonna write this one out. Three plus one plus three plus three plus one. So we got four plus three is seven, and then in parentheses here, another four. So that is 11, so it's seven, nine, 11. And you start to see a pattern, so you might say, well, the next one's 13, but this went one, two, three, and now it's 10. So that's not quite gonna work. So 10 plus one plus three plus 10 plus one. So this is 11 plus three plus 11. So 22 plus three, 25. If I plug 20 in, 20 plus one is 21. So both of these are 21. So it's gonna be 21 plus three, which is 24, plus another 21 which is 45. If I plug 100 in, 100 plus one is 101. So I have 101, I have 101. Okay, that's 202 plus three is 205. So I have all of my outputs for these specific inputs. If I come over to this expression and I test these inputs and I get the same outputs, that would prove that these two expressions are equivalent. If I were to get different outputs, then I would say that these are not equivalent. So plugging in here, I'm gonna plug one in. So this is five plus two times one, which is two. So five plus two gives me seven. So far, so good. These are the same. So next one, five plus two times two, which is four. So five plus four is nine, the same. Five plus two times three, which is six. So I get 11, again, the same. So five plus 20 is 25. Now you can see how much easier the simplified version is to work with than this, and that's why we always simplify expressions, because I'd rather work with this. Look how much faster I'm coming up with the answer, and they're the same. It's the same answer. These are equivalent expressions. And so 20, five plus two times 20, 45. And five plus two times 100, you get 200 plus five is 205. Again, you can pause the video if I'm going too fast. 
Now, are these expressions equivalent? You would absolutely say yes. And then you can say something about the inputs and outputs. The same inputs generate the same outputs. So if I did a certain set of inputs here and then did totally different inputs over here, I haven't proven anything. So I have to use the same inputs here and here for both expressions. And if they give the same exact outputs, I've proven that these are equivalent. Flip it over. And now we're going to talk about a sequence. So this is a sequence of dots, okay? And they all have a certain number of dots here. And we talked about terms, term one, term two, term three. So we're going to call this term one, term two, term three. So it says draw the fourth term in this sequence. So if you look, they all have this bottom row of dots. And then each time they're adding another kind of extension to these dots. So one, two, three, four, there's five dots on the bottom. And then this one had one set, this had two set, this had three sets. So this is gonna have, starting with the one that we already have on the bottom, we gotta add one, then two, then three. So I'm adding four dots, two, three, four. So there's actually five going down if you include the bottom row. But I've added four. So this is term four. How many dots for the fifth term of the sequence? Well, if you take a look, if we count, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine dots. We've added two more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 dots. And if I counted this one, there'd be 13 dots. So how many dots in the next term? You can see it's 15. So I'm adding two. Each term. And we're going to call that our rate of change. So the rate of change is two. It's increasing by two on every single term. So let's complete this table. Term one had seven. So term two had 9, 11, 13, 15. So term 6 would have 17 dots. So now we're going to write an expression to represent this. All right, now why would we write an expression? Because what if I now asked you how many dots there are in term 145? We don't want to sit there and keep counting by twos. We want to come up with a faster, more efficient way to get there. So we're going to write an expression. So whenever we start off with this expression, we're going to start off with our letter, and we're going to use N for the most part. And what you want to do is you first want to find the rate of change, and you're going to want to attach it to that letter. Okay, so our rate of change is 2. It's increasing by 2 every single time. So every time we make N, and N represents the term. So you would plug in the term here. So I would plug in 2, or I would plug in 3, or I would plug in 4. And every time I increase that term by 1, if I increase this, I'm adding another 2. So that's why this is my rate of change. Now, if I just said that the expression 2n represents it, I wouldn't be doing a good job of actually representing what's going on. Because let's say I plugged in term 1 right here. I made n into a 1. Well, 2 times 1 is 2, not 7. And what if I plugged in term 2? Two? 2 times 2 is 4, not 5. Okay, so I would have got 2 here, and I would have got 4 here. And if I plugged in 3, 3 times 2 is 6. So again, these don't match. So this is not the complete expression. I need something else with it. So we're going to make it a two-step expression. So I'm going to have to have a plus or a minus. And again, if I did 2 times 4, if I plugged 4 in for the term, that's 8. And if I plugged 5, that's 10. And if I plugged 6, it's 12. What I want you to do is figure out how do I get from where I'm at now with this expression to where I have to be. So right now I'm ending up at 2 instead of 7, and 4 instead of 9, and 6 instead of 11. If you can start to pick up on what's going on, I'm 5 short on every single one of these. Okay, 2 is 5 short of 7. You can clearly see it here. 10 is 5 short here. So I need to take this expression and add 
five to it. This is kind of like your starting value. If there was a term zero, term zero, this is what it would be. If you go back to the picture and imagine this was term one, what if there was a term zero? So term one, I added this row. Term two, I added this row. So if there was a term zero, it would just be this bottom row. One, two, three, four, five. So in term zero, how many dots did I have? Five. That would have been my starting point. And then after term one, I added one row. Term two, I added two rows and so on. So this extra part right here, this expression, it's kind of like your starting value, like your term zero. But the easiest way to find it, I think, is find your rate of change, make that your coefficient to your variable, and then start plugging in the terms and see how far away am I. Sometimes you're gonna have to minus. In this case, we had to add five to each one of these numbers to get it to the correct number of dots. So our final expression is 2n plus five. So now, why did we come up with this? Use your expression to determine how many dots would be in the 100th term of this sequence. So if I wanted to have 100 of these, I don't wanna draw the pictures and I don't wanna sit here counting by twos all the way up. So all I have to do is use my expression and plug 100 in for n. So two times 100 plus five, it's 200 plus five, so it's 205. There would be 205 dots in the 100th term. See how much time that saved me? So if I can write this expression, I can now calculate however many dots are in any term that I choose.